Thank you everyone for joining us for this talk. I hope you're already having some great time at Open Source Summit, uh, meeting cool people and learning new stuff. Uh, my name is Velička Tonasova. I'm an engineering manager in the Open Source Program Office of VMware. This is Ivana Tonasova. Ivana is one of the very talented uh, open source engineers I have the pleasure to work with. We are both very excited to have you here and uh, to be composing the ultimate S-bomb together. This is how we are going to do it. Uh, we are going to walk you through some challenges and how we can overcome them. I promise it's not going to be just plain theory. Uh, we are going to have a demo of a cool tool that we are currently working on to see how things are done in practice. And hopefully, at the end, we'll get some good questions. Uh, we welcome both questions to which we are able to answer and questions to which we, are all, we won't be able to answer because this is how we all learn and this is how we all get better at what we do. So let's get to business. I want to show you something first. Although it might look a lot like an open star cluster, that's not a star cluster. It's not a complex subway system either like the one they have in New York City. And uh, it's not uh, somebody's uh, network of Facebook friends. As you might have already guessed, this is a dependency graph. A dependency graph of a real life project. Can you name the project? Can somebody name the project? I'll give you a hint. It's an open source project. It has something to do with supply chain security, with uh, container signing and verification. Somebody? Six store what? Six stores what? Call sign. That's the right answer. We have a winner. You win a dinner tonight, 7.30 p.m. at Guinness Park House. You can find the address here. OK. Uh, Let's try, oops, sorry. Let's try with one more dependency graph, even more beautiful. Can somebody name the project? Open source platform for managing containerized workloads and services. Very popular one. Kubernetes. Kubernetes. You win the same price. We'll see you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, those two beautiful dependency graphs greatly demonstrate the way we build software today. We focus on our unique uh, innovation and we deal with common challenges leveraging existing solutions. And that's a fine software development approach. We don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. We focus on our unique innovation and um, our solutions are brought to life so much faster, anticipating and meeting our users' expectations in a timely manner. And that is awesome. But Every third-party dependency that we use comes with its dependencies, and they come with their dependencies, and so on and so on, and we end up with tons of known and unknown dependencies. And that might get us into trouble one day. If I go back to the analogy with Facebook from earlier, my immediate friends come with their friends, and they come with their friends, and so on and so on, and we end up with tons of known and unknown connections, and that might get us into trouble one day. Enough Facebook time in this talk. Let's go back to our modern software. How sick are you of, of this <laughs> image already? We've seen it so many times, but yeah, somewhere there, there is that small project, poorly or not maintained at all, that is weighing under the complexity and the weight of the modern digital infrastructure. And yeah, those dependencies, they've been there forever, but we've started noticing them now in light of recent cyber attacks when we finally realized that we need to pay closer attention to the security of the software that we use. And to do so, we must know what software that's actually in use. To shift from a passive stance if we get hacked to a proactive mindset when we get hacked requires increased knowledge of all software assets. And improving the security posture demands a hardened software supply chain, one that explicitly declares all software components to help identify and mitigate risks before they become a crisis. And here comes the S-bomb. 
A software view of materials can help address these needs. An SBOM uniquely identifies a piece of software and its dependencies in a machine-readable format. And it helps organization by reduced cost, license compliance, and security risks. For example, an SBOM can help identify if uh, there are uh, known vulnerabilities, uh, security vulnerabilities in some of our dependencies. It can help uh, share provenance information and it can help gather relationships information for our dependencies. Or it can help identify if somewhere in the dependency tree there is some tiny dependency yeah, dependency graph, to be correct. There is some tiny dependency with an incompatible license that can get us into a real legal trouble. SBOM's potential to track known and newly emerged vulnerabilities is widely recognized. According to the Linux Foundation report on SBOM and cybersecurity readiness, 90% of organizations across the sample have started their SBOM journey. And it's going to be quite a journey and it would require quite some efforts. Industries need to build confidence with SBOM standards, tooling, and best practices. And SBOM is not a brand new concept, but what often happens still is that when, you, when we try to find uh, that document, we receive some random format, custom invented document that contains less data than we need actually. And it happens more often than we would hope for. And brings some major problems like having not comprehensive data and that custom format as bombs cannot fully benefit from the existing automations. It prevents interoperability and uh, hardens the data exchange. And what I'm trying to say with this is that we need to stick to a standard. And we already have some standards. The SPDX or the uh, so-called Software Package Data Ex Exchange standard uh, started as a pillar of the Linux Foundation Open Compliance Program and it's the official approved ISO standard for now uh, after being the de facto standard for around eight years and it pretty much looks like this. Uh, it contains information for packages and files included uh, and the relationships between those packages. It uh, contains document creation information and so on. The 2.2 version is the last official ISO uh, approved version for now and uh, the next minor 2.3 version just came up with a improved ability to capture security related information. And now the 3.0 version is baking up with uh, great, some great redesigns of organizing the data into profiles including a core profile that uh, contains general information about the document, software profile that contains information about packages, files and snippets, licensing profile, defects profile which contains security related information, build profile for build, uh, build time information and so on. Those turn into a very powerful instrument of uh, knowing what's hidden into our software. And one, uh, one uh, this version is officially published, one can easily translate 2.2 and 2.3 uh, documents into 3.0, but uh, obviously the vice versa would bring some data loss. And those profiles are uh, should be a fully valid SPDX S-bombs by themselves. Uh, and uh, they can, uh, they are great for customizing the model based on, based on one's uh, uh, specific use cases and requirements and allows adding some data elements that address uh, specific use cases. 
There are all subsets that make up SPDX, but operationally one can use any combination of them, like for example, core software, licensing and defects profile together, or any other subset. And there are other standards as well, like the Cyclone DX, which was initiated by OWASP with the intention to be more focused on security information. And it supports uh, labels like CP, Suite, and Perl, which allows identify if uh, software has some known vulnerabilities that are related. And all SBOM formats are intended to be interoperable and out of any uh, corporate boundaries and should be easy to exchange between tools that operate with them, should be easy to replace. Cool, so we know what data we want to convey across organizational boundaries in an SBOM. And we have the standardized formats, meaning that SBOMs can be machine generated and read, the exchange can be automated and we can make it scale. But how do we do that in our modern complexity? With that variety of ecosystems, programming languages, package managers, build systems, etc. Do we have the tools to do that? A lot of communities are currently focused on developing open source tooling for efficient exchange of SBOMs to allow all the benefits that we can have of them. We are not going to walk through the whole landscape of tools, but what we would like to leave the room with at the end is what an ultimate SBOM stands for. And this landscape plays a major role in the definition of ultimate. And this is because the tools appear from need and requirements. And the requirements represent the various use cases. And we want those use cases well represented in the data. From all the tools, third is the one that we are most actively engaged with. Uh, it is a great inspection tool for uh, generating SBOMs for container images and from container images and Docker files. And it was started uh, in VMware's open source program office and is now under the stewardship of the ACT project. Uh, together with some great other projects like Fasology, ORT, SPDX tools and others. It's a post-built solution we, and it supports the existing standards. And it's, a great for, it's great for use cases where you receive a container image that doesn't come with an SBOM and you need to generate it post factum or you have one already generated but you want to double verify the data and fill it if something's missing. And let's have a look at some other tools as well. Salus, uh, is a good uh, build time solution. It was implemented by Microsoft for their specific use cases and what was open sourced a while ago and can be a really good fit for some other use cases. And there is a one, one really uh, nice tool. It's Bomb tool that uh, was uh, created just a month ago and it's part of PKGConf. Uh, it's, uh, it supports build time uh, generation of phase bombs and it's uh, specific for C and C++ packages and it can be a great solution for that specific use case because it can bring more accurate data for those packages like compile, compile data for example. Uh, things that other tools might omit uh, because they are not focused on that. Uh, the SPDX SBOM generator generates uh, SBOMs at, uh, from source code and you can attain the state of SBOM tools uh, birds of feather by Nisha Kumar on Thursday to learn more details about it. And the Kate's bomb is an emerging uh, uh, and uh, all-in-one solution now. And it supports uh, building, create, generating SBOMs for various use cases like from source code, container images, directories, and so on. And it also allows operating with that data afterwards. And there are others as well. As we can see, it's not a small list. 
Great. Uh, having tools that generate as bombs at different stages of the software life cycle is uh, awesome. Each stage, however, uh, has uh, its unique features, and as bombs might have differences depending on when and what data was collected. Missing dependency and built metadata might uh, reduce the benefits of uh, as bombs, the security and compliance benefits that they bring. So we need to make sure that we have all the pieces. As you might already have noticed, I'm a person of analogies, and if I take a glass of water and I add a, a drop of red paint, the water will soon turn red, right? So just one vulnerable piece, sorry, just one vulnerable piece can put the entire system at risk. And we'd like to mitigate that risk. How do we do that? If you look at the SALSA security framework, we can see the red triangles that mark the threats to the supply chain that SALSA addresses. It's highly common that we uh, generate S-bombs at the source code stage or at the post-build stage, which is the package uh, here in this picture. But if we generate S-bombs at build time, this would bring us high fidelity information about, about what dependencies went into uh, our software build and it would uh, bring more uh, complete and accurate data about uh, any modifications that, that were made by the compiler or other tools. And there are other variations as well, like for example, we can only have the object code or we, for, there might not be a good build time solution for our specific use case. So in, in this case, uh, binary analysis tools can do a great job for analyzing what dependencies uh, are in our software components. And as we saw uh, from all this, you can see that each tool has a slightly uh, different approach. One can be built or post-built. Uh, they can generate from source. Uh, they can generate from container images and so on. And this diversity is highly necessary for capturing an S-bomb that's exclusive. Definitely, definitely. We need the best of all worlds because we cannot expect to have from source or uh, build time generated test bombs for everything. And at the same time, we cannot just uh, settle for uh, uh, post-built scan as bombs exclusively. So we need them both. Uh, on the other hand, uh, software is modular in nature and every component has its purpose, dependencies and life cycle. If we incrementally left shift uh, our S-bomb generation on per component basis, we'll end up with wider in quantity, but smaller in uh, scope S-bombs that we refer to as micro S-bombs. Having micro S-bombs to describe each component that makes up a larger software piece uh, would result in much more accurate built and dependency information being captured. I like we'll the big, the the big button. The end. <laughs> I like the big button uh, better. Uh, yeah, but uh, at the end, we might end up piled high with uh, hundreds or thousands of S bombs. Ivana, can we escape that nightmare? Uh, it's hard if we <laughs> really want to generate all the information and capture everything. But the good thing is that we can stitch them together into a single S-bomb and we refer to this as composing. And this is why created, we created a functionality that can do this for us and can, and can stitch those micro S-bombs together. And what it does, it parses the micro S-bombs, it merges them uh, into a single S-bomb uh, with removing any duplicates, updating relationships data to have an accurate dependency graph at the end, and uh, make up a fully functional S-bomb at the end that refers to the, highest, the latest versions of all from all the micro S-bombs. 
bringing all the benefits together and making it easy to operate with a single document. And let's, uh, let's see some practical examples and uh, some uh, demo that we did with the micro s -bomb to be more concrete and show, show real examples and real data. This is a running container uh, from a photon image and I've uh, configured a package conf inside and as we can see there are not many packages so this is why I install Cinnamon Desktop Dev that comes with 205 dependencies in it. Uh, uh, and we will see at the end that uh, the, all of those will be linked to pkgconf. And what we would like to do, we would like to generate SBOMs for all of them, so we create an SPDX folder that, uh, that will contain all the SPDX files at the end. And we uh, list those packages and we will use the BOM tool that uh, I shared about ago. Uh, for generating SPDX for each of these packages. So we can see all those SPDX files available at the end, and those are 205 five, uh, micro S bombs for all the packages. Uh, so let's have a look uh, at a real S bomb, how it looks like. We can see the Cairo package, uh, Cairo FC package. It has Cairo dependency, it has the G object and glib. And let's uh, see some relationship data in there. Uh, looking at the relationship uh, uh, label, we can see that Cairo FC depends on Cairo, it depends on G object and glib. G object depends on glib and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We can see that there is a good representation of the dependency graph. And what we would like to do now, we will copy all those SPDX. I do it externally just because it's a more practical use case. Usually one does this in a CI CD system, but if you if uh, it depends on the specific needs, one can also ship this with a specific image and build it inside. We see that all those are now copied here, all the Cinnamon desktop dev uh, packages, SPDX representations. And uh, I, I will show the tool that uh, we implemented. Uh, this is a simple example config that allows you to configure the core compose document. It's just some example information here and one can specify it to the specific needs. Uh, it's just an example. So I will use the composer tool now and we'll compose uh, all those files uh, in the SPDX directory into a one ultimate cinnamon compose.spdx. And if we have a look here, uh, I will open that directory. We can see all the SPDX packages, all the packages that are referred to by SPDX. And if we open this file and uh, we have a look, we see the, this root document containing all those packages information. And if you look at the relationships, we will see all those packages related. And if you can see, I don't know if, the, if it's seen well, it describes them because there are various kinds of relationships and it, they are not dependencies of this uh, top level artifact and they are described by it. And if you look uh, to the, at the Cairo FC package, we can see that uh, it's here with its dependencies with the Cairo G object, glib, and etc. And we have all that information stitched together into a single document uh, and I think it's a good, good step into having an ulti ultimate document to operate with. And we, if we have to complete uh, the key takeaways that we would like to leave you with today, uh, one of them is that, yes, generating an ultimate SBOM has its technical challenges. And there are a lot of communities that are working on this and are overcoming those. 
And in the end, it's not a rocket science, but it might really come close to if you try to integrate it into some legacy systems. But there is one even more important challenge in it. Yeah, there is one more uh, challenge peeking behind. Uh, communities and organizations uh, need to introduce the necessary changes uh, to their processes to adopt SBOM and to start getting involved in SBOM production. Providing SBOM comes with a lot of benefits one might uh, expect to realize, but there are also concerns that need to be properly addressed. All actors in the supply chains need to start providing the necessary transparency in how uh, their software is created, uh, distributed, and consumed. We need to come together to take full advantage of SBOM capabilities and have more secure supply chains. And with this, we would like to thank you for attending. And this is a list of some of the references that we have in our talk. Uh, so if you'd like to learn more about some of the tools and projects, and those are our contacts if, you, if you'd like to get in touch and exchange some information uh, or have ideas about what we are working on and ideas for improvements or would like collaboration. And you can also find us on the VMware booth to the, tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. and on the Thursday morning. So we will be happy to exchange any information and if you have uh, any questions we would also be happy to answer uh, one question i don't know if we yeah if we have a microphone Sorry, there was some <laughs> first. Yes. Um, with your Compose tool, can you compose any SPDX files or only SPDX files generated by a specific tool? No, it, uh, it uh, works with a document and as long as it's a valid SPDX, uh, it uh, can generate. It just depends if the tool really generates valid SPDX. I tried it with Turn, I tried it with BOM tool, and I, I, it's in on the list to try with some Zephyr SPDX files. Uh, so it works with all that I tested with, and it works with both tag value and JSON formats, and it can output in the format that you would prefer, and it works with mixed formats as well. It parses depending on the uh, file it parses at the moment. Okay, thank you. It's an open source tool? Yeah, it's open source. It's called SBS Bomb Composer, and uh, there is... Uh, uh, oh, I didn't add the link to the yeah, most. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it. Okay, uh, it's it's called it's uh, under VMware samples repo in GitHub, and it's called uh, uh, called Sbomb Composer. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I will. I can write if you'd like. It's Sbomb Composer, and it's open source, and I would be happy to collaborate on it. And uh, if you have any comments or ideas or other use cases that it doesn't address yet. Uh, there was one question in here on um, the second row. Yeah, hello, thanks. Um, the bomb tool you used in your demo, is it a package config bomb tool or yes. is it something else? Yeah, oh. it's the package conf. Oh, thank you. Quick question. Um, is the composer a SBOM generator in its own right or is it just composing existing other SBOMs? It's composing existing files. It, what it does is it stitches together all the SPDX files. So it cannot generate? like. Only yeah, it's not a generator. It, the idea is to compose. get all the data together. Hey, uh, great talk. Uh, Thank you. So I have a question from the user uh, experience perspective. So when you are composing SBOMs uh, by stitching together other other documents, 
there is there might be a situation in fact there is that situation where you may not want everything in all of the S1s so you uh, I know that this is not implemented yet but at some point you need to decide that you only want a certain number of packages from one of the S1s to be added to the final document have you thought about how to uh, give the user the choice of which packages to include in the final S1? Uh, you, you mean uh, how to advise to which packages to select or how to apply this with the current implementation? Yeah, exactly. For example, if I take two S1s and I want every package from the first one, but I only want one of the packages from the second one, have you thought about a mechanism to give the user a choice how to select the, that package? Uh, Currently, there is no such functionality because it, yeah. it didn't come to mind <laughs> the, uh, this is case, but uh, this, uh, this can be added uh, as an argument and one can list, for example, forbidden packages and then it, it would be easy to, because we vote, we parse and vote all the packages so we can just uh, remove all the forbidden packages and yeah, it can be pretty stable straightforward implemented uh, if it's uh, just listing them and there are not some other analysis and if we need some smart analysis then <laughs> it's it's good for discussion okay uh, yeah well thank you Any other questions? Okay, looks like we don't have. I thank you. We thank you for yeah. attending our talk. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.